we are going to make this beautiful sculptural um, a lily, Easter lily today. And this one is made from a text weight frosted paper. Uh, this is a few years ago. We've updated a few techniques, so I wanted to update the, um, the way that I make it with you to give you some options. So I'll show you how to do that today. Um, we'll go over the questions again, just in case. So if you have any questions during the live, we actually can read them out and I can answer for them for you right here. So Anna's gonna tell you how to do that. Yeah, in the bottom right-hand corner of the little chat window is a pink button that says Ask. If you click on that, you can um, type in a question and we'll make sure that Leah answers it. That's right. And if you're watching the replay, go ahead and ask um, questions in the comments, whether it be on YouTube or on our site, and I will come back and answer those later. If you are on YouTube on the live, you can click a button uh, or click the link underneath this video and it will pop you over to our site where you can ask the questions. All right. There we go. Anyone have questions? No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> okay, so we are gonna go over the tools and materials um, that I'm gonna be using. First, the tools. I'll be using a hot glue gun, I think. We'll find out as we go. I have my wire cutters. I do have scissors, but I did cut this out on the cutting machine. So you can have the SVG cut file if you do have a cutting machine. Um, I also have a curling tool for tools, and then I have these blending brushes if you do choose to use the pan pastels. So that's all of the tools I'm using. My materials, I'm starting out with this frosted paper, and this is our frosted paper packs that we love. And I'm using the fourth color, which is just white, and then I'm using the second color in succulent which is this really pretty, it's a, it's a little bit of a, a lighter green, but it has some yellow undertone. And I liked that. I love that for a more of a spring look. Now, this is something that I did write in the post, and that is you can use any paper you have on hand. Like here, I have some cardstock paper. You could use those. Here's some different colors of green. You could use you know, a cream or a white cardstock, or you can also just use printer paper if you wanted to. Just go grab a piece of paper off the printer for your flower and the leaves, find some green somewhere and you know, use whatever you have. That's what I like to do with these, these videos. So along with that, I'll be using some wire. I do have this 24 gauge white paper covered wire. I'll be using those for the centers of my lily. And then I have my thick stem wire and that's also paper covered. And we have links to all of this stuff in our post. I'll also be using this Sculpty today, which is different from the original. I'll be showing you how to make some of your centers with this. It's really fun. I have some floral tape here. Um, I'm going to be using this white glue. It could be any, any white craft glue. And then for color, I have a few things that I'm gonna show you, but you know, again, you can use what you have. I have two pan pastels, and this one is the bright yellow green, and this one is the diorylide yellow, and I can never say that. <laughs> Di diorylide, there we go, something like that. <laughs> I also have matching markers to go with each. This one is the Karin Brush Marker Pro in pale orange, and this one is lime green. And I noticed that when I'm, I'm adding this color onto my centers, and I noticed I needed really light colors because if they're a mid-tone, they go dark. So just know that you need very, very pale colors if you are using markers, which is a good option. Okay, I think that is all of my tools and materials. I'm gonna move a few things aside, and we're going to start with the centers. Let me just give myself some space here. So I don't know if any of you have worked with the Sculpty clay. It is bakeable. So this is the Sculpty 3 and it's just a white, white color. And it says right here, uh, 275 Fahrenheit for 15 minutes. And one thing that I have found when I've, I've been using the Sculpty for these types of centers is that you can bake your wire right with it and it doesn't hurt it at all. So for every flower, I'm going to be making five of these kind of long tubular pieces. And then I have one that has these little teeny tiny, uh, kind of a three balls on the end. Can we do a close up here or should I just raise it up? Matthew, what do you think? Does that work? Okay, there we go. I'll get it close to you guys. I'm watching. There we go, that's pretty good. There. There we go. 
Okay, so you can see I just made three little tiny balls. Whoops, wrong way, there we go. And basically just glued them onto the wire. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. These are all baked and ready to go, but I wanted to, since we don't have time to run out and use the oven, I thought I would just demo exactly what I do. So when I'm making all three, each of them need five, so you will need 15 of these. And what I'll generally do is go ahead and make all 15 of these little rolled pieces. And I just kind of roll them between my fingers. I like to pat the ends to make them rounded. And I'll line them up to make sure they all kind of look the same. And if they're a bit different, that's okay too. So I'm just gonna make two here for you since we don't really need to make any more. Um, yep, they're kind of sticky. But there is nothing, I'm, I'm just saying from a potter here, there's nothing better than using clay. <laughs> okay, and then for the little one, I'm just gonna take three very, very small bits of clay, make them into balls. You wanna make them the same size. You can pull some clay off to make sure they're the same size. And then you'll just attach them. And it's just sticky enough to attach. So it looks something like this. And I'll bring that back up again. There we go. <clears throat> All right, and then the wires for each of the flowers, one flower will need three of the wires, and I'll just cut that right in half. Need me to move that. Okay, so I have six wires, and I will go ahead and slide this clay onto the wire. And I'm, I'm gonna slide it almost to the end. If it pops through, just kind of wiggle it back and pinch it. And then once I have them on, I'll go ahead and put those in the oven and bake those and then let them cool. All right. And this one here, what, what I did for this is just slide the wire into the hole between the three and then maybe pinch the base around it We'll end up gluing it, so if it falls off, that's okay, because we'll glue it. So just to have it kind of prepped and ready. And then I'll pop those in the oven, just like that. I have, I have all of them lined up, so what would it be? 15 of these and three of these lined up and baked in the oven. Okay, so we're gonna, ding, it's done. <laughs> I'm gonna use this piece of paper and here are my five finished baked pieces. And this is what it should look like. So the next thing I will do is I'll use my glue. This is a glue that we really like. This is the Barely Art, and two of our favorite glues is Barely Art and Art Glitter Glue because they stick really well. And I love this little tiny fine point here on the end because then I can really you know, adjust the glue flow as I need it. And I'll go through and make sure that all of these wires are snugly glued inside of these. Because they will, if you don't glue them on, they will pop off. So I'm just gonna put some glue right into the hole here. And you can you can feel these are nice and nice and hard and ready to add some color to. Go ahead and put in the comments what you all are going to be using your flower for. If you make these, are you going to gift them, use them for home decor? What are you thinking? So we can have some fun interaction here because I want to hear what you guys are talking about. <laughs> okay, that one I had already glued on. So those are ready to go. Anna, did you want to call any out if you hear anything? No, I think people haven't typed quick enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So now I'm going to use the di diary light yellow. <laughs> all right. I'm tripping over my tongue um, for pollen. 
it's an option. You don't have to do this. And I will tell you, it does get a bit messy. So an option would just be to use a marker. You can just color it with marker or paint even. You can use paint just as easily. And I'll show you, I keep this marker on hand even though I am using this pen pastel. But the reason why I like the pen pastel is you'll see, I'll go ahead and kind of rub this brush around and bring some of the pigment up so it's nice and powdery. You really don't need that much. And then I like to put it onto my paper here. And then I'm taking my glue and coating the, the whole tip and rolling it in the pollen. This is kind of a, a fun little, I don't know, touch, even though this is an extremely, a little bit more sculptural and less realistic type of Easter Lily. I just think it's such a fun touch to add this little pollen. And there you go. Can you see that? Yeah. And I'll do that to all five. I'll bring this over. This is a little trick that I use a lot when I'm making centers and I need them to dry. Rather than setting them on my table, I, I love this cake shape because it will never tip over because it's a circle. And I can just press my wires right into that. Is that in your way for the camera? Okay. And I'll go ahead and do the other four. Now this one I'm leaving white, so I'll just go ahead and pop it in and let the let the glue dry, which it already is, but you know what I mean. You don't need a lot of glue, just enough to make it sticky. And then again, just kind of roll it in that powder. And if if you have a bit on the bottom where the powder isn't, you know, adhering to the right against the wire, that's where we're going to use the marker and just color it in. And that's optional, you don't have to. You don't have to color it, it looks pretty good. And I know you were asking me a question earlier today about this flower. No? Yeah, how are you going to use yours? <laughs> oh, it's, it's definitely going to be a centerpiece um, on my Easter brunch buffet. Oh, pretty. Yeah, that's... I don't have any lilies growing in my garden, so it's kind of a special thing to make a paper one. Why not? All right, so we have a lovely comment from Sarah. She said she's probably going to gift hers. Uh, since she joined, her mom loves to tell all her friends about her amazing florals. <laughs> and she has an ongoing list of people who want some. Oh, yeah. Um, I think their other impression takes me like five minutes <laughs> to make one. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Sarah's going to be busy, but we'd love to hear that. Yes. Well, this is a good one because, you know, it is actually quite easy. And if you want to save some time, then I would say just paint these. This does take a bit, a bit more time. But the rest of the flower is quite easy, as you'll see. I think Sarah needs to host a little crafting party with her mom and her friends. There we go. Here's another thing I might do is I have my brush, and there's quite a bit of pigment, pigment on here. And I'm trying to, let's see, I'll use this hand because it's not gluey. And then I'll see if I can do this. I'm just kind of, oh, look at that. Whoop. <laughs> that actually worked really well. Kind of spraying it. And then you can tap it off so you don't have too much. I think I need a paper towel. Maybe you could throw that over to me. And like, yeah, that will work. Thanks. When you're using pan pastel, especially this yellow, you don't want everything in your life to be yellow when you're done. Hello, I'm, this is Emily. I'm over here running second camera and I just wanted to say that we got some really lovely emails about this lily. Some people are so excited and um, one of our members actually made this already and said her husband thought it was a real flower, Aww. which I thought was so cute. Yeah, well, and I'm going to show you at the end. I'll, I'll do, we'll do a close up on this one. So this is our crepe paper version, which looks very, very realistic. So, you know, two options. What a great thing you can do a quick one that's just really fun and easy and then or you could spend a little more time i just really love that brush technique i'm gonna have to bring that to a member <laughs> make the powder spray from your brush all right i'm going to set these aside to dry because it's important 
that their dry before you, you know, start making putting those together because you'll get pan pastel everywhere. And you can see I didn't use that much pan pastel. Um, and yes, please send us your comments, your feedbacks. We read every single message we do. and email we get. We do. And often it will be read or posted in our group chat so everybody <laughs> reads it, especially the good ones. <laughs> there's, there's often um, comments that make us teary-eyed because they're so sweet. We love to hear how crafting changes your life. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is grab the green pan pastel and I've already pre-cut all of my petals. So for each of the flowers, and I'm doing a plant with three flower heads, you'll need two of these pieces. And you can see that there's a score line. Can you see that? There we go. Yeah, there we go. So you can see there's score lines on those. And you can set the score, scoring um, on your cutting machine. And what I'm going to do is, I can see the impression on the top side versus the back side, it's a little lighter. So top side up, what I always do, this is kind of my trick on score lines, is I fold it backwards. This is where you do not want pan pastel on your fingers. <laughs> and I'll, I'll go ahead and fold each of those score lines. And I'm folding them all one direction. The reason why I, I love to use frosted paper when I'm making a less realistic and a bit more um, art piece, you know, more sculptural piece, is that the uh, frost on the on the paper just gives it an extra dimension, which I think is really beautiful. Okay, I have that one done. Then I'll go ahead and I have a different brush because I don't want any orange seeping over onto this. And just so you know, you can wash these brushes just like you would a makeup brush and keep them nice and clean. So I'm brushing up and the way that I like to see it is to kind of go with the actual folds so that's where I'm putting most of the pigment and then it's blending in between. And I'll do it on both sides. Because you want that green coming through the centers and through the back. If you want to, you can put a fixative on this, but I usually don't. It's up to you. It's it's you know rubbed in there pretty pretty well. Okay, I'll do the same thing to all of the other ones, all three. So they're all done. So right now is a great time to ask questions or give us some feedback or comments. I have some feedback. <laughs> okay, I'm going awesome. To say that I think a fixative would be a great option for those uh, pollen bits to help hold on the, I like to call it dairy light. I know that's not how you pronounce it. I think it. it's probably dairy light. Dairy I think light. I say it wrong. Dairy <laughs> light yellow. Anyways, um, a little fixative on those tips would probably hold any stray pollen, although a little messy pollen might look more realistic. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if any of you have actually pulled pollen, pollen off of your flowers. It's, it's actually, you know, I used to have a, a florist, um, a, a, a flower shop, I used to have a flower shop, and we would always pull the pollen off because it makes the flowers last longer when you take those pollen pods off, the lilies, so. And if any of you have done it, they're pretty, they're pretty messy. So this is fun, kind of like origami, just kind of fold, fold, fold. Yeah, and frosted paper is where I started my paper flower journey before we moved into crepe paper and now we're really going heavy into cardstock. If you haven't seen some of our cardstock flowers, oh, they're amazing. I, Megan makes them and she's, she's knocking it out of the park. I don't think I've seen cardstock flowers as beautiful as hers. 
Yeah, maybe we want to share the little surprise that we're actually doing a cardstock flower for a member make. Yes. Next month. So member makes is a live workshop where you get to make along with um, Leah and, and Megan if you are a member. Yeah. We, it's like our favorite time of the month. If you haven't been, you'll want to come if you're a member for sure. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. And we always do, we usually do crepe paper flowers. And we always take requests from our members. Okay, all of them are folded. That was fun. Now we'll go back to doing some pan pastel. You can kind of move through it pretty quickly. We also found that using these brushes is by far our best um, best way to apply the color to both crepe paper and frosted paper because it really gets that pigment down into the paper. The reason why I color after I fold, as you may have figured out, I just don't want that extra pigment on my fingers. I don't want to rub it off. So I feel like get most of the work done before I add the color. That makes sense. Now, if you love lilies and you want to use them in a different arrangement or just make one, that would be gorgeous too. You don't have to make a plant. Plants are so giftable though, I feel. All right, so, oops, one more. This is extra giftable to anybody who loves lilies and has cats, <laughs> since I think that lilies are not great for cats. That's true, they're not. <laughs> so a paper lily is a good cat lover's choice. Well, I'll have to make one then, because I do have a cat that likes to eat plants. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right, they are poisonous for cats. Yeah, they are. Love paper plants. Also don't have to water them. We have a lot of them in the studio, not just flowering plants, but green plants, lots of paper plants. Okay, so I have all four of them done. I've already made one, just so you know, um, just kind of get ahead of things. So there's one that's done. And here is my trick. So I'm gonna take two of the leaf or petal circles and for the inside set, I'm going to put the tab on the outside. And I'll explain why here in a second. So you can actually kind of fold it and line it up like that. That way, when it's on the inside, there's no tab. You don't see a tab on the inside. And then for the outer one, I'll put the tab on the inside. So you'll put the glue on the back rather than the front. And then all tabs are hidden. Look how that's just so easy to put together with everything folded. There's no mystery. Okay, then the inside I'm going to, with the one with the tab on the outside, I'm going to add some glue. You can use hot glue if you want to. I'm finding that this works really beautifully. So I've added quite a bit of glue to the tip and I'm going to drop it in place, and kind of kind of press the, the ends together, and then I'll set that aside and let that dry. So we'll do that again. And when you fold them, you should have a very, very small hole here at the base. There'll be a, you'll need it. So if it's not there, we can always clip another one, but it, uh, it should work out really well. Okay, again, I'm putting the glue on the one that has the tab on the outside and sliding it into place. to 
make a six petal lily. You can even pinch it a bit if you want to, to make sure it's nice and sealed. Okay. The next thing we will need is the curling tool. And this is pretty easy. We'll just go through and these are, I would prefer they be dry, but we're not going to wait. So we're going to go ahead, um, go ahead and go through and just curl the tips of each one of these petals. I'm just going to pull it out for now. You can curl them before you put them together and glue them if that's easier for you. But since it's not dry, I'll go ahead and do this first. Otherwise I have to hold it while I, while I glue. Okay, there we go. Glue still looks good. I think that added green inside and outside just really makes it look so pretty. So, so pretty. Okay, let's see if I can do this one without it falling apart. Whoop. Trying to be gentle here. You have to kind of pop it open so the fold opens up without really wrinkling any more of the petals. There we go. That worked out. Okay. So now we're going to go back to these guys. And we have some of them that are less than dry than others, but we're just going to go for it. Ah, they look pretty good. The dry glue is fairly quick. So I do like the look of the stems being a green and especially when I have a, a bit of pollen. I don't know if you guys can see this, but there is a, a bit of pollen or orange that's hit some of the stems because it is paper. So this is a great way to fix it. I'm just going to take my marker and zip some of this green onto the paper. Another reason why we love the paper covered wire. I'm also taking the little orange to, uh, bit here and just coloring in the base if you want to. It's not super important, but if you want to, you can do that. Okay. So each flower has five, so I'm going to just arrange them in clumps of five so it's easy for me to see. This is very satisfying <laughs> because it the paper is so uh, porous that it just saturates really quickly. Can you see that? Sort of. I'll place one in the center so it's against the white. I feel like when you're making paper flowers, having some go a good set of coloring options for both crepe paper or frost or cardstock, any of them, pen pastel and markers and colored pencils. It's a really good investment to have all three of those. Yes, yeah, so we want to share. We um, just receiving in a new inventory of pen pastels into our shop, so they should be all unpacked and ready to purchase tomorrow. Yes, and the thing about pen pastels too is uh, they they're they're an investment, you know, more or less, but they. It lasts a long time. We rarely, rarely go through more than, you know, one of these a year, I would say. Yeah, so they la or even longer. So it's, it's a good investment because it will last you. And that is our most used color, I think. I think both of these two. <laughs> this is the one that I use the most, and then Megan uses that one the most. So those are two of our most used colors. Mm -hmm. And I will say those of you who are looking into getting any water race markers for your craft collection. We have done a lot of experimenting with different markers here in our studio. We really liked these Corinne markers for a while, but now we're having trouble sourcing them. So we found some really great replacements in the Tombow markers. We have those in our shop as well, or you can get them at your local craft, craft shop, whatever yep. works. Yeah. And the reason why um, with the, what we were looking for in a marker that was important to us was that it had this tip. So this is a brush tip, and the Tombow markers also have the brush tips. As well as coming in all the pastel colors. Yes. These didn't come in pastels. So that brush tip is important. But, you know, use what you have. If you just have some regular markers, use those. 
I'm also going to color the stems of the white centers. So they match, it looks so pretty, it looks so springy. There's nothing better than a little pop of fresh spring green to make it look like it's spring. Okay, so now I'm going to take one, one of the centers, the white centers, and I place my five, whoops, pan pastel covered ones on around it. This would be a good place to spray if you don't want the pan pastel to get onto your little white piece, but you know, it is what it is. And if it, if it doesn't stay in place, it's okay. We will rearrange them a bit. Now I'm going to measure about, I would say three inches and I'll pinch that with my fingers at three inches. I made the other one a bit longer and I wanted, I decided I liked it a bit tighter. So three inches where, where we're going today. And I have my floral tape and I'm just gonna go over some tips on floral tape in, in case anyone's new. So it's not really that sticky. It's this waxed paper. And what you have to do to activate it is pull it and kind of you, you use your, the heat of your fingers and then pulling the tape to activate it so it sticks to itself. So it'll, it will open up the wax. So I'm going to go all the way down to the tip. And I'm making it as tight as I can. So I am really tight, pulling and tightening that floral tape around my wire. Then, before I go in, I'm going to arrange these. Just kind of move them around so they give a nice little splay around the white center. There we go. And then you can take that point and slide it into the hole. And I like, I like it being snug because then it will hold the flower in place. These got a little saggy. You'll notice they need some more glue or something, but this should hold it in place. And I'm pulling these into the flower so they're about the same height as the bend of the petals. Then I'll take one of my thick stem wires and there's a pointed end and a less pointed end and my pointed end will go to the top and I'll go ahead and wrap that nice and tight with my floral tape. And this is something, I like to take my time on this section because they will show. This is something that's pretty visible when you're working on your, your plant. And I have a question for you really quick. Mm -hmm. Did you put the wires around that thick stem wire or did you just put them on one side? I put them on one side. If you can put them, if, if you could put them around but I had already bundled them up. If you put them around, it would break it up and make more of a circular shape. But I think this looks pretty good. It's a bit of a, an oval, but I don't think it's enough that anyone would really have issues with it. It's up to you. But since I had wrapped my all my uh, six wires all the way to the end, does that make sense? So that I could get them through the hole. And you know, feel comfortable if if you don't like the way it looks. Go ahead and do another layer because you know these can be a bit thicker. They're not, you know, you want it to look like the proportion of the weight of the flower itself matches the thick, the thickness of the stem. Okay, there's that one. And we'll do the last one. These little tiny wires are kind of hard to keep in place. So sometimes they'll move around and no worries, you can move them. Move them back. Okay, so four inches, it's about right here. And the thing about this, this floral tape is, I have to admit, I really love using crepe paper instead of floral tape. Uh, but, you know, I thought I'd keep it simple today, but it's so sticky. It makes your fingers so sticky. Really, really waxy. You could, if you do have crepe paper, you could use the crepe paper glue method that we teach as well. All right, I'm gonna try your method, Emily. I'm gonna break it off early 
and leave all of my wires and see if I can get this through, which I should be able to, without tearing the paper too much because we don't want it to flop around. See, that's the problem is it doesn't really want to go through. We're always experimenting. I think your method works best. I think so too. I'm not going to do it because I don't want to tear tear my flower. So I'll go ahead and finish it. Okay. So while I'm finishing this, um, Anna, make sure and put a link to the crepe paper version. We of, did. Oh, of course somebody. you did asked about it. <laughs> yes, and I think there's a video for that one as well. We did that one as a member make. Yes, there is a video. Mm -hmm. So we have a crepe paper Easter lily video and you can find the link in our chat feed. I forgot to shape these, <laughs> so I'll pull them out just a bit. Yeah, if you didn't do the pollen and you just used paint, this would be a really delightful kids project. Since I kind of messed up my base there, it is getting a little floppy. So I think I'm going to use my floral tape and just sort of bunch it at the top and tighten it to make it not flop around. I don't know if that's gonna work. I might need to use some glue. Okay, I'm gonna use some hot glue. I think this is great to see because I know I probably would have ended up making that hole a little too big. Yeah. So I'm, it looks like if I put the hot glue at the base and then I can kind of, I don't know, pull it around a bit. I might want to hold on to it. It's very bumpy though. I think part of the fun of being a crafter is figuring out solutions. <laughs> like, okay, w that was a mistake. How can we solve it? All right, we'll see. We'll see if that works. I'll hang it upside down until it cools. Ooh. And as I was doing that, I bumped some of the petals with the, the yellow. Hey, it's very realistic, right? I'll just set that there for now. Okay, while we're letting that cool, and I'll finish that stem in just a bit. I'm going to show you what I'm doing with the leaves. There should be 10 leaves for each bloom. So there's two sizes, five of each size. So that, that would be 30 leaves. And I don't think it's really important that you uh, keep them piled because as we move down the stem here, we're actually going to use the small and the large. And in fact, I'm not even sure we're gonna use all these leaves. We'll just use as many as we need. So there is a score line. And I'm going, I'm, I'm folding them, but notice I'm not really folding them to the end and there's a reason. There's an end with a blunt tip and there's an end with a pointed tip. And I'm just kind of leaving that end unfolded because I'm going to curl it and it would be a waste of time. Just have a few left here. So this shouldn't take you too long. You can just kind of pop it and then run the fold. That's just to accentuate that extra line. I know in um, the original version, she did add some pan pastels, pan pastel to the leaves, and you can do that. You can use the lime green if you want to, but because of time, I'm not going to do that today. I'm just gonna go ahead and shape them for you. All right, so now you'll want to look for the side of the leaf that is blunt, and you'll know that's the bottom. And then you'll just take your curling tool and very lightly, that was probably too much, very lightly, oh, oh, there we go, give it a nice curl. And then you'll, you'll just want a nice pile of leaves. And I, the nice thing about frosted paper too is you can, you, you kind of can't ruin the curl. If you curl it too much, you can curl it back the other direction. So just kind of play with it. And it's, it is also very satisfying. Whoop. That fold wants to stay in there. All 
That one's not folded. Nope. Oh, that's my hot glue gun. I can go back and curl these a bit more once I have them on the plant as well. If you're making just a, um, a stem and you don't want to make a whole plant, I would suggest that you maybe put a few leaves up in the upper section and then finish the stem. And that would, you know, make a really nice little one stem lily. Two got stuck together. If you don't have a curling tool, you can use the edge of your scissors or maybe even a credit card or something like that just to give it a nice quick curl. you guys can hear the sounds of the curling. I think it sounds so, so <laughs> nice. Yeah. That and, and the brush, the blending brush against the paper. It sounds kind of cool. Okay, there's my pile of leaves. I'll finish this up. There we go. See, that's nice and set. So that worked. I'll go ahead and finish putting this together. And then I'll show you how to assemble everything and put it into a pot. And I know we're, well, we're about right on time. I try never to go over an hour, so it looks like we'll be good. And having this double wire, so the wire goes, you know, up through the flower and then down the stem makes it nice and solid. Gives it a really good finish. If you wanted to, you could also add some pan pastel, which I think I'll do, onto the neckline. I'll show you here in a second. I think that's probably enough. So I'm not wrapping all the way down the stem because we are going to attach everything. This pen, um, this uh, this floral tape is pretty light, but if you want to blend it, go ahead and take some pan pastel, and at the top you can blend it right up into the paper, which looks very natural. Okay, now I'm going to bend the three heads and arrange them, decide how I want them to sit in my pot. And usually I'll do a higher one in the center. Anna, did you have a question? No. Nope. Um, okay, so you can see here, there's they're like tall and then a little lower and then a little lower. So that's a really pleasant arrangement. I'm going to grab them at the base here, just maybe, what, three inches below the lower flower, and I'll go ahead and tape those. Just wrap that all the way down to the bottom of the stem. Now I have a pot prepared here, and I'll show you how I did that. And before I start adding the leaves, I need to decide how much stem I want to go into the pot. And that will determine where I stop the leaves. And I, I'm not even sure I'm going to use all these. We'll see. The oh, sorry about that. <laughs> You're just close to it. Yeah, OK. And I will, I will go ahead and um, wrap all the way down, because it will make it easier to slide into the pot. I don't want anything to catch. Okay, so here's the pot. And I picked something a little bit taller. And you can see if you want to do an overhead here, there's a foam ball inside. And you can use a styrofoam ball. This is actually a, um, a water 
uh, you, water, well, you can add water to it, but we're obviously not going to do that. But it's softer. I prefer the styrofoam balls because they'll hold better, but this is what I had on hand. So use what you have on hand. And I'll press, decide how deep I want that to go. Can I see the front view so I can check this out? I'm feeling like I want it to go, yeah, that looks good. And that's perfect because that's hitting the base. And when I pull it out, I can tell, you know, it's left some of the foam, so I'm not going to even need to mark it. And now I'm just going to start putting leaves on. Oh, that unplugged. Whoops. Uh -huh. We have we have the plug underneath the table here, and sometimes it drops out. There we go. <laughs> okay. Let's try some of this glue, see if it works. Now, could you use rice or pellet chips, those little plastic pelly things? You could. You could use um, anything to hold them up. Even rocks might work. I guess this this I use because it's um, it's fast and it kind of holds it. You can also use you know some sort of a cement type of crete, like a craft crete, and actually make it permanent. Okay, I'm going to try the white glue, which I would prefer anyway. I'm just not sure. We'll see if it holds. Um, so I'm basically starting to add the leaves right up underneath where all three are attaching and I'm just going to move them all the way down to where an end end right about here. So, okay, I don't think this white glue is going to work. I would have to hold it too long and we just don't have time for that. All right, anyone? out there sharing what they're using it for Easter, what they're using this lily for? I think everybody's so busy crafting. <laughs> are, we, are we doing a craft along today? Yes. That's awesome. Liz said, this is brilliant. I'm watching it from the UK. I've never made a flower before and I just bought my first book. Oh, good, yes. So we are super thrilled to have you here today. We are, and I will tell you, we've been making paper flowers here for over 11 years. And we have a lot of templates and tutorials. And if you're new and you're, you're not a member, just go pop over to our freebie section. We have quite a few really good things for beginners. Um, so we've been experimenting with paper flower making for quite some time and have all of our favorites. And we want to make it as easy for all of you and so that you can have successful, beautiful flowers. Okay, I just had to kind of recalibrate here again. That will be all right. That white glue just didn't work. So I think what works nicely is to put the glue onto your stem and then just go ahead and drop the leaf right on. And I just noticed I put one on upside down, but it doesn't really matter. See, even an expert makes mistakes. Yes, that is true. Uh, we have a question from Teresa. She says she's excited to find you. She wants to learn how to make flowers Yay. like the peonies and the Easter lily. Yes. How beautiful. What's the best way to buy to get started? Um, it depends. Are you thinking you want to start with crepe paper? Uh, crepe paper flowers. Um, if so, you know, you can get like a little tin pack of paper. There's some starter uh, flower. There's a starter flower with each one. Um, Anna, do you have any thoughts on that? Because I know um, you, in terms you, of tools, so we do have a oh, starter tool okay. bundle. I, okay, tools. We'll Sorry, share link for that. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, in all the posts we do share what we have, but the, Leah suggested ten packs of crepe paper. Kind of gives you a nice color variety, and then there are a few pan pastels that we use more than others. So I think it's yeah. the ones that we're using today. You know, I, I think if you are making paper flowers, if you have a cutting machine, that's awesome because there's a lot of options for cutting machines and there's a lot of options for people who don't. And if you are one who, well, I would always say invest in a good pair of scissors, absolutely. And we use, the, our favorite scissors right now are these Kai scissors, but the ones we use the most are the actual smaller pair. We call them detail scissors. So I would invest in that for sure can always use a good pair of scissors. You can see how it's coming along where the, the leaves are starting to fill out that space. And I would ask, do you have any particular pattern that you're putting these on in or you're just kind of moving down and around? 
Um, so I'm moving down and around, but I'm just trying to space them out so that it doesn't look like they're lined up, but yet they have a, a flow. There's no method other than just eyeball it <laughs> and fill in the spaces between. Does that make sense? So Teresa says, this is fantastic. My she shed is being finished and oh. she does have a cutting machine. Okay. And so jealous of the she shed. That's fantastic. It is. It is. Uh, yeah. I kind of recommended our two master classes. We do have a master class of frosted paper and one for crepe paper. We, yes, and I was going to say that, Kelly, thank you for bringing that up. Right now, we haven't quite um, <laughs> determined when we're putting those live again. However, there's, there's going to be a really great option coming up. So if you're not on our mailing list, get on the mailing list because you'll be the first to know. And we're, we're going to be offering this really special, beautiful package for new members. So if you want to learn how to make paper flowers, whether it be frosted or crepe paper or cardstock, we will take care of you. I will promise you that. We'll give you, we'll give you everything we know. <laughs> so yeah, get on our mailing list. I think that would be a, a big one. We also do have a, quite an extensive video library. So we have mm -hmm. a playlist for tips and trips for paper flower making. Mm -hmm. And then we have beginner paper flowers, how to arrange paper flowers, so make sure you check out some of those. Yes. I think we, we counted the other day, I don't know, how many videos do we have on paper flowers? I know we have a lot of paper flowers. I can't flower count templates. that high. <laughs> I know. So yeah, go check it out. And it, it's called the video library. Um, and you know what, if you ever have questions, please write to us, any of us, any in any way, whether it be email or if you make a comment, uh, we will always respond to you. And we listen to everything that that you have to say or questions, answer your questions. Oftentimes it's a bit of a tag team of answering questions, but we always make sure they get done. Yes, and Leah personally answers a lot of them. I do. I, d I like it. It's nice to have the, the hot glue actually works really well. Can you see kind of my, my method here? I, I just kind of turn it around and look for that spot. And I think once I get to a place, so I know that it goes straight to here, I'm going to add just a couple more and then I'll finish this flower out. Whoop. We just finished our um, the Crepe Paper Flower Masterclass. And again, the comments on the the fin the people who finished incredible it just makes it, it makes me want to do more because it makes me happy <laughs> that we're making a difference in people's lives okay i'm going to call it and turn this off so i didn't use all of the leaves and what i want to do to finish this before i slide it in is do a final wrap just around the base so that none of those leaves will get torn when I'm sliding it in. I probably could have added a few more, but we're running out of time and I wanted to give you the final look here. Okay. There we go. Oh, so sorry, did I hit it again? Okay, like I said, I could have probably put a few more in, but you can arrange your leaves at this point. You can actually even go back in there and use your curling iron if you want to soften them or add a bit more curl. Curling tool? I, I said curling iron, I meant curling tool. <laughs> this thing, not your curling iron. <laughs> there we go. That's for hair. <laughs> That's for hair. And you can, you know, arrange the heads the way you want it to look, but I like them going, you know, three different directions like that. All right, here we are. We have so many Easter lilies now. Whoops. Ah! We have, this is the original version. Here's today's version. And then our crepe paper version. I think I'll just hang out back here. Bye. <laughs> All right. Anything else? If anyone has any suggestions on what they would like um, us to do on video, especially with my little lives that I do on YouTube, put them in the comments because we look at all of them just like we said and we often will go with your suggestions and offer it up to you. So there we go. Yeah, so we have a comment here. I think I'll do it in another color. It's going to be my first paper flower. Yes, any color. It doesn't need to be white. 
And mm-hmm. Teresa said, I just got connected to the mailing list, and that's how she found us today. Oh, wonderful. Yes. And then Liz is wondering if we do any paper packs to make complete flowers. So for the um, mm-hmm. live make-along workshop we mentioned, um, that we call Member Make, we do a bundle for that each mm-hmm. month for members. Mm-hmm. That also comes with a video. Mm-hmm. Um, do you we have also, any other great tips? Yes, we also have some kits in our shop, felt paper, scissors. We have frosted paper, flower kits, and a few, I think we have a few more of the crepe paper, three. So we're actually, those are almost sold out. We're working on coming out with another set, but grab them if you can. Yeah. All right. Until next time, and if you have any more questions, just put them in the comments and we'll yeah. come back and answer them. And if you're not signed up for our email list, make sure you do because that's where we share all yeah. exciting news. I call it daily gold. It's like really, well, it's probably not every day, but weekly well, gold. Well, there, there <laughs> might be a little gold coming this Friday. So if you aren't signed up yet, now's the chance. Now's the chance. All right, you guys, we will see you next time.